Well, I want to welcome everybody. This is our ninth Connecticut State Grange Lecturers Roundup. It's great to see folks here, and I'm sure more are going to come on board. And um, what we try to do is every two to three months is gather people together to talk about the latest happenings and hopefully provide you all with an opportunity to learn new things. Tonight, we have a couple of great speakers that are going to be joining us, um, one from in-state and one from out-of-state, and I'll introduce them when we get there. Um, this is our um, proposed agenda for tonight. I've just done your welcome. And on hopefully on the side of the screen, we can see everybody who is out here. We currently have 15 folks out here um, who are with us. And uh, um, so we have Joan Smith, who is here um, from the National Grange Foundation, and I'll be introducing her. Um, we have um, Joanne um, Cipriano, and Joanne, you're from Beacon Valley. That's right. Partisan politics. And then we have Debbie Vale. She is a Winchester member, but she's the lecturer for Mountain Laurel Pomona, number 15. And Debbie, I'm going to keep saying 15 because I've been saying the wrong number I found out recently. <laughs> um, we have um, Ramona Fazio mm. from Winchester Grange. We have Terry um, Fazio. And um, Terry is the co-director with Bob um, Carboneau, who's also the lecturer. At, Bob, you're at um, 14 or 16, Mountain. Um, Let me promote to 16. 16. And it's, Charbonneau. it's Charbonneau. Charbonneau. Thank you. Thank you. I should know that after all these years. <laughs> and Gene Thompson, who I'll be... Um, 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 talking um, about later, and he'll be talking with us. Dorothy's iPad. Hello. How are you? What grange are you with? Oxford, 194. Excellent. Excellent. So, and Nancy? No? Okay, Judy? Uh, Bart Hampstead, Riverton. <laughs> <laughs> Bar Campstead went out in 1900, Judy. <laughs> we just had the history lesson. And Grammy Gray. Oops. <laughs> and Earl and Sandy. Winchester uh -huh. gets an award tonight. Nice. Um, they're from Winchester Grange, and um, Kristen Paulson, who is the immediate past state lecturer from Massachusetts, a uh, uh, local community um, president in Rhode Island. And Cr Kristen, we can't see you. Your light is off, but you want to say hi? Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, hey. everyone. And Kristen has been a great help on our Northeast Lectures Association meeting. I see, let's see, is that Dawn out there? Yes, I'm here. From Riverton Grange. Um, and Dawn actually has a great new initiative. And if we get time, Dawn, I hope you'll share that with other mm -hmm. folks. Um, um, I'm so pleased with what you're doing there. Um, let's see, Diane? I'm from Synexic Grange. Welcome. Let's see, who am I missing? Um, speak, shout out if I have I called your name. Oh, Kara. Kara from Granby Grange. Hello. And is <laughs> Philip with you, Kara? Uh -oh. No, it's just me. Okay, welcome, welcome. Um, Kara is actually a newer um Grange <laughs> member, and yeah, we're really pleased um, that she um, is the secretary at Granby Grange Number no. Five in Connecticut, and her husband is um, our new master at the Grange, and they've been Grangers for less than a year, I think. So, who am I missing? I I can't see all the pictures on the side. Uh, Karen McDonald from oh. Greenfield Hill Grange. Karen, Hello. there you are. I thought I saw you earlier. Oh, and Kristen, your light came on. All right, yes. did I miss anybody else? Okay, so let me, um, we we did the introductions. So let me um, 
um, mention Joan Smith is somebody that will be coming in person to Connecticut for the Northeast Lecturers Association Conference this June. Connecticut is hosting the Lecturers Conference mm -hmm. this year. And um, she is somebody I have gotten to know through Potomac Grange number one, through um, gr the grants program, through the foundation, through the one in a thousand um, um, program. And she's gonna be talking about a number of different mm -hmm. things for around the next 20 minutes or so that she mm -hmm. felt were really important for lecturers. So I hope everybody will sit back um, and learn. One of the things that she's going to be talking about is how your local Grange and our state Granges um, can earn incentive um, payments for participating in some national programs. And when she comes to Connecticut, we'll all hopefully have completed our first report. We have to do two reports in order um, under one of the projects to get the incentive um, payment. So with that, Joan, I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dave, for the invite. And I'd like to uh, say hello to everybody up there in Connecticut and surrounding area. I am currently in Myrtle Beach. Uh, this past weekend, we had the National Grange Leadership Conference in Myrtle Beach. Um, Virginia ended today about one o'clock uh, with a lot of new state uh, presidents from across the nation. This was their first conference ever. Uh, so there was a lot of questions and answering. And of course, we have a new national president, Sister Chris Hamp from the state of Washington. We have a new national lecture of Tom Quinn, uh, who did talk, and I'll share a little bit of what he said with, uh, with you all. Um, he is using he, the lectures program as printed that you all currently have will remain in effect for this year uh, with all the due dates on September the 1st. And he is initiating uh, back the Junior Grange Photo Contest. So that uh, is being brought back in if you haven't uh, done that yet. So I wanted to share that with you. Uh, I, uh, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Grange Foundation. I'll tell you, I've been a Granger uh, for 66 years. I'm a, a fifth generation myself. My daughter is sixth um, and president of the local Grange and the Pomona Grange. And my grandchildren are all Grangers. So my Granger heart, but the Grange Foundation was something that I never really understood or learned about until about 15 years ago. And then 10 years ago, I got put on the board and now I'm chairman for my eighth year. So I think it's important to share with you that your Grange consists of really three pieces of the pie, same as our federal government. We have the National Grange that we all know about and that's our operational arm, I would say, our executive order. That's where our national president is, our staff. And they are the ones that you hear about, see about, and that are um, producing all of the paperwork and the documents and collecting your dues and, and issuing out uh, the program books, et cetera. We also have the grain, and all three of these are individually incorporated um, are incorporated under the IRS and federal government. National Grange has its own uh, uh, employer identification number, as does the foundation, as does the Grange advocacy. Grange advocacy, you might equate to the legislative branch of the federal government because they're the group that handles all of the policies and the resolutions uh, getting them in front of our national representatives and our national you know, senators. Uh, and that is chaired by Burton Eller. And if you get the patron's chain on uh, one Friday a month, you see his view from the hill. Excellent relationships that the Grange has established, particularly in the past, I would say, seven years. Uh, a great headway has been made between our Grange advocacy group, which consists of industry and Grange 
partnerships that have been developed over time under Burton's leadership. And our name in Washington, D.C. is absolutely known. Betsy Huber, our former president, was is on many, many boards um, in the nation. So we have really risen as a as a vision and people they think of in D.C. when there's a bill, a policy, the farm bill, conservation bills, taxes that they address on what rural America is thinking about. The other piece, the other arm is the Grange Foundation, which I am chair of. And we are, you might say, the funding arm. We are the ones that program for and pay for the grants, the youth program, the junior program. And I'm going to give you a list in a few moments. The Grange Foundation is what I call Grange self-funded. We have no funds except. Um, 1994. This is grants. This is our charities. This is our service group. Next slide. So a history, there it is, started in 94. Some of you may remember National President Herschel Newsom. Uh, and the executive committee at that time said we need a something that will be able to um, support education and charitable work of the Grange. So they established the foundation. That's its corporate name. Um, so it is a 501c3, which means any contributions that anyone gives to the Grange Foundation are writable right off on your taxes. So if somebody wants to leave something in their inheritance, no estate taxes of any kind are paid if you leave it to the Grange. The Grange doesn't pay anything. The family doesn't pay anything. The estate pays nothing. So as a 501c3, we encourage you all to think about how you could support the foundation in its work, which I'll show you in a moment, because you will benefit from that, particularly if you're retired and you have those required minimum deductions that you have to take from your 401k or IRA or taxes uh, or other monies that you have to take during the year. Um, and then you pay taxes on. If you decided that, well, I'll give those uh, minimum required deductions to the National Grange Foundation, then you don't have to pay taxes on it. So you will end up saving 33% or so uh, of that money by giving it to the foundation. So I, I just wanted to share that with you because most people don't know about the foundation. Next slide. So our mission statement of the foundation, and we support the youth development, promotes agriculture education and research, improves communities, fosters culture, heritage, citizenship, and charitable activities. Next slide will tell you what that means too. So uh, what I want and what I think we all want, because we're on this call, we want the Grange to be forever. We put our heart and soul into the Grange. It's what we do uh, in our spare time. And it may be, it may take up all our time as another way to look at it. <laughs> and we want our children and our grandchildren to feel the passion that we feel. Uh, we want it to live forever. Um, and because of the wonderful life we've had, the fellowship, the community service that we feel that we have really made a difference in, the, in our local community or state or nationally, depending upon how you're involved. Slide. So these are the areas, if you might consider providing something to the foundation, the, you can say, I specifically want it to be addressed to these areas. Maybe the youth fund, the junior fund, American arts and culture. Now that's where we have a uh, support quilts of valor. It's also where we now have started a, a um, effort to preserve the seventh degree as it, as it, most of you took it, um, Many of you on the phone took it, I'm sure, in the past. And you remember, maybe remember some of the costuming 
and the big screen that was in the back that is a hand painted um, massive 20 by 40 picture of the two of the temple in Greece where the whole story of the seventh degree takes place. So we now have within this cultural fund, uh, we got our first donation this year for preservation of some of that uh, seventh degree paraphernalia. Um, community and Leadership Development Fund. Deaf Awareness. Now, Connecticut State Grange participated in that in 22, and they were our winner that year and received a $1,000 award from the, fellow, from the foundation for their project in the state of Connecticut. The Communication Fellows. Those are the folks that do all the publications for you, that put everything up on Facebook, that um, work hard as can be at convention and before and all year long to do all of our publications. The Good Day Magazine. Hopefully you're all subscribing to that. It's $16 a year. It's a wonderful read, um, wonderful articles. Uh, we appreciate it if you're if you're getting the Good Day oh. Magazine. The oh. Shipmates program is new this year. Um, we just started that. It's under the membership and enrichment arm of the Grange. And, and uh, your uh, state, your Northeast uh, lecturer's director, uh, Dave Roberts, I'm not sure what you call them there, but he's a member of the Shipmates. And their folk, they each have a focus area, and I'm sure he'll share that with you sometime. The Grow Club is the... Uh, club for Grange royalty uh, over the past you know hundred years. If you were ever an ambassador or a uh, young couple, as it was called, now it's called patrons. Uh, you're a member of the Grow Club, so if anyone is wants to contribute to that, the One in a Thousand Club, uh, which is there's so only a thousand members in that total out of our hundred and fifty thousand members. Uh, you can join for $1,000. You have a life membership. And we are the one in a thousand club is preserving our historical documents. There's a national lectures fund. Um, and we hope that you might be, I mean, $10 to any of these is a big help. $10 to each one of those would be a big help. But whatever you could do would be wonderful. We also have 24 in 24. Um, every year that goes up by a dollar. So the sooner you you know kick in, you'll save a dollar this year by when you when you might want to contribute next year. And then we have our scholarship fund, which I'm going to talk to you about this evening. Slide. Uh, we also have the endowment fund, which was established in '64, and that's for uh, we never use anything except the interest in that fund. So you can imagine that their interest has not been. Uh, dynamic in the past few years. Right now it's pretty good, but uh, we only can use the interest in the endowment fund. So that that has a stable amount of $94,000 in it, of which we earn interest. And then we take that and we determine which fund it will be used for. In the past few years, it goes right to the youth and juniors. So in summary, um, 501c tax deductible, well, we hope that you'll help the foundation do its work to fund all those efforts in the Grange and you get a nice tax deduction. Um, and uh, think about it. If you have any questions, uh, my information is on the front of this deck, um, slide deck, and be glad to uh, answer any that you have. Uh, one thing that the foundation started, um, we received a, a bequeath from Ernie Kaiser from the state of Virginia, longtime Granger, loved the youth, and she provided $20,000 in her estate for the establishment of, of a scholarship. She provided to the National Grange Foundation for us to develop uh, the scholarship. Uh, and this is our very first year. Um, and the value this year is $1,000 because this is our pilot year. We're ringing out, is our application appropriate? Have we got good evaluation criteria? Um, you know, you, when you start a new program, it's best to have a trial. 
make sure that it's in good shape. Don't freeze everything until you shake it out. And that's at least that's the way I work. So we are doing our first year this year. We have everything in place. So she loved youth. She was involved in it. She used to judge the different contests for the youth and loved it so much. She wanted to do this for youth. So next slide. Um, so this, the scholarship is that you must be a Granger, but you can be a, a high school senior. You can be in a two-year college already. You can be in a four-year college already. You could be out and going for a doctorate. You can be in any accredited school, vocational school, trade school, um, gardening. Um, if you are a learning, going to be a master gardener, uh, a next degree, and would like to some help with those expenses, you can apply for this. So all of your children, grandchildren, nieces, nephew, 70-year-old, uh, if you want to go back to school, there's nothing that says you have to be a high school you know, senior to apply or be going to college. It can be for a trade and vacational school. So, so, so Joan, I, I want to yeah. just stop you for, yeah, I want to just stop you for one second. So everybody hear that. Judy, I know you just graduated taking a course. I know we've got other Grangers that are doing things. This is not just for high school seniors or young college people. If there is a valid accredited program, you can apply. There's one scholarship this year, and you're going to see shortly about the deadlines, but this is an opportunity. So Sandy and Earl, you could go to community college and take a class. It's probably That's free right. if you're over age 40, like I think you both are. Um, but anyways, yes. Um, but this is a great opportunity if there is something and you need a little financial assistance. So spread the word at your Granges about this project or about this scholarship program, because this year there's one, hopefully in the future there might be more, but it's just a great opportunity. And Joan's just a great person that's spreading the word. So thank you, Joan, on that. Well, you're welcome, man. We felt that, you know, there's the, the kids, I'll call them the kids, the high school kids, have a lot of help finding scholarships and their guidance counselors are working with them. But there's not, it's more difficult for the, those of us that might want to go back and get a master's degree or get certified as a master, uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, Gardner? Master, Gardner? Uh, composter, composter or oh. something, or to be a higher level uh, welder or something of that nature at vocational school. So two letters of recommendation are required. Uh, one from the local branch. It cannot be a relative uh, that writes your recommendation and it can be any officer, any individual in that branch. It doesn't have to be the president of the branch. Uh, and a teacher if you're in school or a mentor, meaning someone, it could be your, your reverend your uh, uh, work boss or work person. That's kind of someone you look up to that knows you well enough to write a letter of recommendation. Slide. Uh, there is a essay required. We have to have something to evaluate folks. So there's five topics, A through E. 500 words is about two pages double spaced on one of these topics. Um, and that's part of our evaluation criteria. So how will the furtherance of my ed education help the Grange or my community? How does Grange membership, what does Grange membership mean to me? What are, it would be my goals with furthering my education? What lessons have I learned from my Grange experiences? How has the Grange helped to develop me as a person or leader? You notice every one of those has the word Grange in it, almost. Because this is a Grange scholarship to a Grange person. So we felt that this year we wanted to try these topics and see how, um, how it works out, what kind of uh, essays we get back. Slide. So 
There's also an application form, uh, which is your name, address, uh, if you know what college if or where you're going, the accredited school name, put that on the form. Um, and But you only have two weeks left. So it's been in the patrons chain um, every Friday since January 10th was when we announced it because that's when we got everything done and ready. Um, so we're hoping that the word is spread. I have gotten a couple of calls from folks that had a couple of questions, um, but you have two weeks. So get the word out. If there's anybody in your range, your niece, your nephew, anything. And we will announce the scholarship on the 10th of April. That gives us five and a half weeks or so. So there is online billable application. You can do it right there online or, or someone can for you, or you can do it yourself. Uh, the packets are due the first. And there's the website, um, grangefoundation.org slash scholarship and the application. All the information is there. Mailing addresses hard copy, there's my data, um, and it is being mailed to my home or my, or the Grange Foundation email, which you see there. Um, Chris is there because she's the president of the National Grange, and if you have something else, um, you can give her a call at any time. But right now, I would say that she's in a learning mode, and in case you haven't heard, we have sold and signed all the paperwork and the Grange at 1616 H Street has been sold. Um, and we have 30 days to vacate the 10th, 11th floor, the basement and the sub-basement. And we have to be out of those areas to the first and second floor. We're going to stay in the building for six months. Um, and uh, so March the 6th, uh, we will be at our new floors within the Grange building. We can move on to the any questions on the Grange Foundation or the Grange Scholarship. These are some things from, from the Grange pers Foundation perspective that are happening the next Wednesday. If you're a member of One in a Thousand Club, we have our annual Zoom meeting um, for that sub-element of the Grange Foundation. Um, we also sponsor the National Agriculture in the Classroom. Some of you may have heard of that or been involved with education. And there's an award that the Grange Foundation gives to anyone across the nation. They have to be nominated. And again, they are selected for the volunteer of the year who volunteers their time, their energy, their maybe their farm, that they have school kids come out and visit their farm and do hands-on or just walk around the milking barns or the cow barns. Um, and we give a, an award every year to the volunteer of the year for education. March 1st scholarships, deaf awareness applications are due May the 1st. Um, then we hope that uh, uh, all year, people will think about the 24 and 24. And a cute thing that we started as a fundraiser, so it doesn't hurt you directly out of your pocket, is the meal a month program. This is a way for the foundation to make some money. Um, you all go out to eat, probably, you maybe once or twice a month. So we encourage you, instead of going out to eat some night, um, and spending now it would cost you ten dollars to go to McDonald's a person. Basically, it's very it's gotten quite expensive. You could stay home and have peanut butter jelly or tomato soup and grilled cheese and send that ten dollars to the foundation. And in turn, we put that to work and that it will support the juniors, the youth, the deaf awareness program. Um, you know, that Connecticut. One, somehow we have to get that thousand dollars. So we appreciate anything that anything monetarily that any of you could do uh, to help us either on a regular basis, ten dollars a month or twenty dollars a month, whatever you can afford um, and help the Grange stay uh, 
as active in the community as it is and for our juniors to be able to travel in youth, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Are there any questions about the foundation? These are the current board members. You may know some of these folks. And just to highlight, two of them are shipmates. Correct. Richard. And Nathan. Term. And Nathan on down on uh, class two, a uh, two-year term. <clears throat> so the board members are cream of the crop and very excited about Grange. We love them all and they love the Grange and we, uh, we look forward to exciting future for the foundation uh, and the work that we do. Any questions on the foundation or the scholarship? Okay, hearing none. We, if you do think of something, I'll be glad to answer for you. Now, a little bit about me and why I'm showing you the next program. I am retired from the Pentagon um, as a program manager, and I started out my career in satellite communications, and I end up as the U.S. Army liaison to the NATO, um, our allied partners, um, for communications within Afghanistan. <laughs> and I did my NATO work for five years, loved it, had opportunities to travel to countries that I'd never been to as part of sharing information and how we would do that safely between our nations uh, to save lives so that we weren't erroneously uh, firing some weapon and it hit the uh, a, a one of our allies vice the enemy. So that was part of part of my job. So part of that as a program manager, uh, led us down the road with the Grange because I, I told you I'm a very old Granger and uh, I was asked to participate and develop a proposal uh, for some funds that are originally come from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services down to a, a institute which is here on the front page called PCORI. Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute. Uh, they solicited for this work, and uh, we were very proud to be the winner of this Reaching Rural Surgical Senior Project. Uh, that's the name that, that we gave to it because it, it fit what we're doing. And why, did the, why is this important? Why did the Grange bid it? Um, ninety-seven percent of all U.S. land is classified as rural. That seemed high to me, but this is right off of the U.S. Census Bureau information. This whole page, and this is all recent. Uh, Twenty about a fifth of the entire population live in a rural area in the U.S. And one hundred and ninety-five. You could read this hospitals, but have closed in the past two years. So it's getting less and less opportunity for healthcare in rural. Many hospitals have also closed in suburban areas. Probably some of you have felt that and urban. Most of that is being the lack of uh, treatment of uninsured, many uninsured folk and the hospitals uh, will get paid very little from the federal government to treat those and it's impacting their ability to stay open. 28% um, of rural homes still lack broadband internet. They have to go to a central location for internet or they therefore they can't do uh, telemedicine. I don't know if any of you have done that. I've done it twice. Uh, it was successful. And as you have heard through the Rural Minds program, and we are an equal partner with them, uh, there is a high rate of suicide in rural. This is important hot topics that we all should be concerned about. Um, and there are 20% fewer healthcare providers, whether it's an MD or a GP or a, a nurse practitioner uh, in suburbia, in um, urban than in, uh, sorry, rural than there is in urban. 
Um, and you up there in the Northeast, and I was shocked at this, but Vermont is our most, most rural state in the country. And I said, how could that be? It's based on the number of small towns and the size of those towns. Um, not like the acreage that Texas has. It's based on the the population in relationship to land mass. Uh, it's, also, and it turns out to be it's also one of the most expensive places to live now. <laughs> and they're, you know, they have a lot of some other issues up there with tax tax base and not issues. So, um, you know, they're a little different than the rest of the country. Um, <clears throat> so why does the National Grange care about this? And I highlighted um, the fact that, and why did we win this contract? Well, we're looked upon, if you didn't think about it, but we're looked upon as a trusted messenger to and a voice for rural America. We're grassroots. There are very few organizations that everything starts at the bottom. No resolution is ever acted on by the National Grange that doesn't start with you. You sit there in your Grange Hall and there's something that bothers you. You put that resolution together and it goes to your Pomona's, the state. And if they approve it, it gets to national. And all of a sudden your issue that started in your Grange Hall can end up on the national front. And then it gets acted on by Grange Advocacy and our partners as part of that and it may become law. Physician challenge, only 12% of all physicians practice in rural America, 12%, that's all. 97% of the country is rural. 20% of all the population is rural, but only 12% of our doctors are there. Hospitals are closing. And of course, us rural folks, I am a suburban, by the way. And of course, I lived in downtown D.C. So I was urban for uh, 15 years of my life uh, and then suburban. And I'm suburban now. As a, of my first 55 years, I lived on a farm in New Jersey. We grew pumpkins and we had pigs and chickens and ducks. And then I went from there right to downtown D.C. That was scary, but I survived. Learned how to live in a city. Now I live in suburbia. So because of these statistics, the results are that rural Americans are more likely to die prematurely from those delisted diseases. So it is a top priority. And so the Grange won this contract to help with turning these results, we hope, at least making people aware. This is where the lectures come in. Slide, please. So what we've done, um, Dave, slide. Okay. We won this contract. And part of it is that we have to reach 150,000 folks between now and June of 25. Now, that's a lot of people that we have to touch. So we've done some things already to help that, but we need your individual help at every range to help us do this, uh, to reach 150 folks with this information. Next slide. So what we've done is we have developed a USB drive. Now I can't see you, but um, maybe I can. How many of you, if you could raise your hand, are aware of the packet that was mailed to every Grange in the country? There's one, Kristen, Joanne, Debbie. Oh, great. Okay, there's Debbie, who else? Anybody else aware? David? Judy, wonderful. Well, I'm so happy to see that. So the package was mailed to every Grange in January. And it contained a lot of information for you. There were uh, two guides that we published and put together that are in the packet, completely ready for you as lecturers. 
to give, to reproduce, and to hand out to folks. There are lessons, and I'm going to go to the website here in a minute and show you what, what you could do as lectures with what we're providing to you. Next slide. <clears throat> um, so you can have lectures programs for patients, families, caregivers. The contract requirements, but you can outreach to the community. Well, this information you can share with your future farm FFA kids because they have parents and all this information is things that their parents know. The 4-H clubs, churches, fairs, all you have to do is provide these brochures, these guides. Take them to your church and leave them on in the best of your Take them to your senior centers and leave them on the counter. They will get picked up and disappeared once people open them up and look at what's inside. The town halls, farm your banks, any place that will let you put them down, we can take credit for, you can take credit for distribution and therefore exposure to these two guides to help people. Your doctor's offices may let you also do it. We'd like you all, to, if you can, to conduct a forum for the public uh, and put it in your local newspapers. And um, there's been an article that David put in your um, Connecticut State monthly, count, um, I think it's monthly, maybe it's bi-monthly newsletter on, on, on the project. Slide, please. So what we've done is prepared Four lectures programs. They're ready made. They're already there for you. You don't have to do work and there's enough there for one full year, maybe more, depending how you use the material of programs, ready made, canned, ready to go. So I will share with you in a minute to show you how easy it is to use the tools that we've given you uh, to do these things. It's good for all ages. At the National Convention uh, for the Junior Grangers, we did FALLS, F-A-L-L-S. And what they could do if their parent, if they were with their grandparent, their aunt, their uncle, their parents, and their parent fell, what can that eight-year-old do? You know, there's things they can do is make sure that person, if you can force them to stay there because we all want to jump up. We're embarrassed to death. We tripped, we fell. Oh, got to hop right up. That's probably the worst thing you can do. You should first assess your body. You know, is my ankles all right? Can I wiggle them? What about my knees? Can I bend them? My wrist? You should test your body from your toes to your head while you're laying there on the ground. Just for a moment, doesn't take long to know if you should get up right away. And that also gives your blood pressure, your adrenaline time to calm down. So we went through all this with the kids. They rolled around on the floors. They got in all distorted positions on how their parents may have fallen down. So if they had fun doing it, you could do it with your juniors, with a school classroom, um, and share. So here are the sites you can go to. Either one of these sites will take you directly to the website. David can, if, I'm not sure if you're active, but what I want to do, and then we'll go to the website for a moment if we have time, and you have to tell me, David. We're, yeah, we're running short on time. Okay. So maybe I, this is one of the things I really wanted them to know about. When you come to Connecticut, we're going to have a lot more time for this, but right, both good. our state Grange and our local Granges, this is the state Grange, but let's go, this is the local Grange. So- right. So let's do this slide. There's five things here. You could do any three of them. And between now and October, uh, the sooner the better, of course, uh, before other Granges start doing it, uh, and get $100. You conduct a Grange program and just record how many people were there. You can do, and that could be a Zoom program, advertise a Zoom program. You can just do like a this. Yep. Uh, you could do a public forum and count how many people were there. Um, there, You could provide videos that guides to three other organizations. And I list some ideas, but you all belong to other organizations or clubs. And you can 
go there and share this. This is not Grange information. This is healthcare information provided by the Grange. Uh, you could have a display at your bank window at the fairgrounds and have the material there. Uh, you could do social media, any three of those, and you fill out a form, which is nothing. It just says, what did you do and how many people were there? There's not a lot of details required. And these forms, because this is a contract and we have to do all this by May of 25, I'm asking for three reports, May of this year, October, and May of next year. And then this program is done. If we are successful, the National Grange will get its full allotment of money and we will benefit financially if I if I'm able to accomplish this in my budget and the national grange will have in its pockets, $100,000. That's after all expenses. Now that's my plan. And I'm hoping to be able to do that with your help. And that's giving out um, 250 granges, a hundred dollars on next slide. Well, I just want to mention that don't, don't fear um, this year at the National Convention in Niagara Falls. I know many of us on this call were there and they passed out um, incentive checks for another program. Um, yes. When these checks are passed out, if you're not there, I'm going to be in Bettendorf, Iowa. Our state president, Rob Buck, will be there. So, that, you know, if you can't or somebody from your Grange and you've earned the incentive, they will be bringing the check back for you. So every community Grange ought to be looking at this. And again, it's the first 250 community Granges. So I'm hoping many of our Connecticut Granges can do this. Right. You are an ideal location because you're you look at Texas for them to do it. They're much, you know, their granges cover much more area, physical area. And it's harder for them to distribute. They don't have as many um, communities that have, uh, you know, the facilities that I think you have. Um, if you have any questions, there's my address, RRSS. That's the short name for the program. And on April the 10th, why we invite you all to a Zoom that we're conducting on long-term care and estate planning, uh, which is part of Grange Month. Uh, it's done by a Granger who is a lawyer, and he will give us about an hour and a half presentation on how to do some smart planning for your estate and some smart planning for long-term care um, one of his solutions is go on a cruise for a year. It's cheaper than than a nursing home. But, but anyway, he's done this three years for us. It changes every year, the presentation, based on what the new laws are, what the tax situation is. So if you can join us on April the 10th on uh, Grange Facebook or YouTube, that would be fabulous. And Joan, the other thing I wanted to mention is there are five regional coordinators for this. I serve as yeah. the Northeast coordinator. So if you can't get a hold of Joan, you know, contact me. And if for some reason you haven't gotten your information, but, you know, all the um, community Grange masters slash presidents received a packet in the mail and it had brochures, it had the um, the flash drive um, and everything that is needed. Um, but again, Joan's going to be coming, but do your first report to try to start getting the word out. What I did at my community Grange is um, I did one of our lecturer programs on this. I asked our lecturer if I could have mm -hmm. one of the months to do it. And so we just introduced the program to them and then we encouraged them to come to the in-person program in um, June in Norwich, Connecticut. All right. So you can, when you go up on the website, there's, you know, all the information, there's briefings there. You don't even have to create a briefing. There is all types of uh, information for you readily available, download, printed at your local uh, print shop or office, wherever you print stuff and and put them in, your, in any location you want. So I wish you the best of luck. Call me or 
email me and I'll be glad to answer every question you have. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much, David. Thank Joan. you today. No, Appreciate thank it. you, Joan. Such valuable information. Now, another speaker that we have with us today is Jean the Amazing. And for those that were at our state convention last um, fall in Norwich, you got to meet Jean. He was the entertainment that we brought in for our um, um, lecturer's banquet um, at that. He's also entertained for us at Christmas in Riverton events, which includes the Riverton Grange, um, and Gene wanted to introduce himself to all of you. If you'd ever like him to come and do a program in your community, he's right here in Connecticut. So Gene, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, um, this is my first Zoom meeting. So uh, I, I really enjoy it, it's really fun. Uh, uh, I'm in a little square over here. I don't know if I can see myself in the center. Can you stick me in the center, or do I do I do that, or so I can see what I'm doing? No, no, oh, that's okay. It's okay. I'll be in a uh, little. Gene, Gene, yeah. take your cursor and go right above where your picture is, right okay. above. Yeah. And you'll see a whole bunch of little squares right up there. Oh, say so you. Go and go to the one, tap the, the one that just has you, the speaker. You see that? No. Oh, no, that's not it. Okay, wait a minute. View. The second block from the right. That's full screen. <laughs> that's from this? the left. Go to the left. Those little little dots there. Yeah. And right. click that. Oh, you'll the dots. Big center stage. Oh, there we are. And then hit okay. this one. And this is really Gene's first Zoom. We practiced last week. So um, <laughs> because it, I, and I'm so glad we did. So Gene, my kids are here too watching you because they met you in Riverton and they wanted to see you tonight. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Gene, yeah. if you shop, stop sharing your screen so right. that I can that, that's in, right. So we can see him full screen. That would be great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> there in a full screen or I, I can't tell. Okay, good. I have no idea, but because <laughs> I I'm new to Zoom. Okay, yeah. Well, um, I did thank Dave. Okay, great. Um, well, I'm Gene Thompson, aka Gene the Amazing, and uh, I'll do a little quick trick for you. Um, let's see if I can blow this up. Oh, no. Hmm. <laughs> wait. Wait. Okay, there we go. All right. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, got a little ball here. We're having a ball. Yeah. And uh, go like this. Oh, wait a minute. It's over there. Okay. Mm. Oh, over here. Okay. And I'll uh, <clears throat> put that in there, just like that. Put it away and then. Oh, Gene, oh, wait could you tip your screen down because we can't see your elbows? You can't. Okay. Take your screen yeah, and tip it. I don't know where I am. How's that? Perfect. Is that good? Can I see my pockets right here? Yes. Good. Yes. Okay. All right. So, hmm. All right. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do then. Okay. Well, let's start over. Okay. Here we go. There. And, oh, there's the elbow. Okay. Huh. Another one. And uh, this one goes in the pocket. Oh, this one comes, wait a minute. <laughs> it's not supposed to come up like that. Okay, now I gotta put that in the pocket. Wait a minute, huh. okay, okay, wait a minute. This is good, I have no idea if you can see my hand out here, but I got, now I have two. Two, and uh, <clears throat> let's see, nothing in between. Oh, there, okay. Now I have two again. There we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Now we have three. Okay. Now we go take the one here, the middle end. No, no. Is that that? Which candle was that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's like... it's fine. Oh. Are we still on? Yes. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, here we go. Oh, let me see. Oh, I found it. Okay, here it is. There. Okay, and now we have three and now four. Okay, ah. we'll take the fourth one here, put it in here and great. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me tell you what I can do for your meeting, gathering or dinner meeting or event. Any kind of an event uh, could be a retirement party, could be uh, anniversaries, all sorts of different things. I usually do a stand-up show. It's uh, around an, an hour, somewhere in there. Uh, or I can also do uh, uh, close-up magic, table to table, walking around. And you can see the magic unfold right before your very eyes. Um, <clears throat> I uh, became interested in magic as a kid. Uh, my cousin Bill used to bring me uh, some magic tricks uh, that I could do, you know, and they were easy, you know, but I got, I actually, when I was 30, I, I joined a magic club and I've been doing it professionally for, well, 45 years now. And, uh, and my, my cousin Bill and my cousin John and my cousin Dolores and my uncle John were all entertainers which kind of, uh, that's why I'm probably an entertainer. I don't know. Anyway, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I do a, what I call it a stand-up uh, magic with comedy. And uh, nobody gets cut in half. There's no fire, <laughs> there's no danger involved, but everybody has a really good time. It's, it's fun. Uh, and uh, I have my own stuff. I have my box, my wireless mic. And I have was, it, it'll come the entertainment at the huh? Say what? Oh no, okay. <laughs> yeah, I have a wireless mic and an amp that will cover a room full of a hundred people. So if you're you know thinking about having me to your uh thing there, uh, I'm I'm available. Um you know, I love magic, I love the art of magic, the skill it takes to do make people laugh is my gift for you and you and you and you and you. Uh, I bring the audience to a feeling of wonder and awe. And uh, here's one last trick for you, if you'd like. Okay. Uh, what you're going to need a, uh, well, you might need something. You might need a, a piece of paper and a pencil. You, you have anything handy like that, everybody? No? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Paper? yes. Okay. All right. I want you to pick a number between one and 10. Okay. All right. Got it. Write that number down. Okay. And remember it because you're going to need it at the end. Okay. Uh, I want you to double that number that you picked. Okay. All right, now add 10 to it. And now divide it in half. Okay. Now take that number that you picked and subtract that one you picked from the number, you know, that was uh, you added 10 and just split it in half. That number, uh, you know, subtract that. Okay. Okay. Now, if I controlled everyone's mind, <laughs> everyone's mind on the back of this, on the back of this, I have my prediction. It We're ready. Five. Yay. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. did that during our practice and I was amazed. So anyways, Gene, again, your contact information um, oops, oh, yeah. um, is going to be on the screen in a second, if I can get there. GeneMagic.com uh, is my website, and uh, GeneTheAmazing at Yahoo.com is my, uh, uh, let's see, am I in the spot there? You're good. You're good. Yeah, Okay. Yeah, uh, Gene the Amazing at yahoo.com is my website. So you can either email me or you can look at my website. Everything's yep. on. 
Yep. Perfect. Gene, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for coming to um, State Grange last year. And um, I hope to see you at some of our local granges, our regional Pomona Granges, our State Granges. So um, I was over at Rhode Island State Grange last weekend. So, um, but great to see you again. Um, just want to move on before we run out of time here. Um, we do have our birthday greeting initiative that you've all heard about. You can get this right off the website. If you would like some hard copies, I have some. I'll be bringing them in June to our lecturers meeting. But anybody can sign up electronically and get a greeting from National Grange. Um, I didn't know if anybody had any updates, and I didn't know if Dawn was still out there to talk just briefly about her new initiative that she's launched called Maker Sundays. I'm still here. Our, our Maker Sundays, we decided to run them twice a month. Our second Sunday of the month is a, a state straight Maker Sunday. You come in and you're either making something to sell for the Grange or for yourself. Um, we're limiting it mostly to Grange members right now because of space. And um, on the fourth Sunday, which is what we're getting excited about because that's our, our coming up Sunday, it's going to be a maker and marketing Sunday. So we're encouraging any of our Grange members to bring their own stuff in and have it on display and it could be for sale for anybody that stops in we're gonna put it in like our town chatter and um we're putting out posters outside and so forth to draw people in so they know that we're there and seeing as riverton is now getting a whole big maker space um coming in it's uh we were hoping to draw for that too so some of the things, Dawn, that I've seen, um, somebody wants to make fishing um, stuff, lures and stuff. Um, I've seen people that were working with wool, people working with jewelry, people sewing. Um, it's just so exciting to see the hall being open and used and really getting back. Our Grange was um, founded in 1908. We just celebrated our 116th anniversary. And I think it's just so exciting. And Dawn brought this idea to our Grange and um, her um, um, mom and others have just been real sisters have been really, you know, promoting using your hands to do things. So, yeah. um, I don't think my mom has been promoting that because she's been well, gone your for sisters a while now, but your mom historically, when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, but you know, and I'm not going to take credit for this because yes, I like the idea of the maker space and all of that, but it really took one of our newer members, um, Tim Sweeney, to tell me what how would it benefit the actual maker? I mean, I'm used to doing crafty stuff, a lot of different things. And, it, you know, many of you might know my sister is a florist and I do a lot with photography. But, you know, I didn't know what we needed to put in until I talked to, to an actual and he's a tin maker. And um, what would benefit? the members that are makers. And as you said, we have some that are fly tying and some that are doing wood projects. Um, we've, we've got a lot of different things going on and we're, we're having fun with it. Right. It's a great social hour. And, and we're proud to say we're a growing Grange because I know at your last one, I actually saw two members, um, Robert Angus and his sister Sandy, that I'd been working on recruiting to Grange. And they came to your Maker Sunday, which was great to see. And then we've had a husband and wife, the Pathlins, who we hadn't seen in quite a while. And they've now come back because of Maker Sunday. So I think it's just another great activity and idea. And if any of your Granges for a lecturer's program would just like to hear more about it and seeing if you could do it in your Grange. Just one other um, idea I wanted to throw out there recently was um, Hillstown Grange had their free seed event 
where they received almost um, over 12,000 packets of seed that they have been distributing vegetable seeds, flower seeds, and they still have some remaining. And so I know Granby Grange, I think Kara just dropped off, but Granby Grange is going to be picking them up because we have a community garden at our um, rejuvenated Granby Grange. So again, another great um, opportunity. And of course, I also want to mention the pancake breakfast. I like to tell people I'm on the pancake circus, circuit, circuit, not circus, circuit. And I've been to Wallingford Grange, Hills town grange and i know a lot of the granges right now are doing the pancake breakfast and it's great to support all of us and then the final plug and if anybody else wants to talk but we are so close i was mentioning before the call started to signing the contract for our Northeast Lecturers Association Conference. We haven't done one of these in many years. And we had our leadership conference um, for the Northeast region in January. This will be the next one in June. And then we hope in July to have the youth conference. Um, they're looking at New York State, but um, the details are coming together. I'm appreciative of all the folks helping me, Judy Doyle is going to be the registrar for this. She's already started working on the website. Um, Kristen Paulson has just been a wealth of information for us. I know um, Debbie Vale is helping on um, on this also and um, in, in providing feedback. So again, just lots going on here. So does anybody else want to offer anything before we end our ninth? Um, I will say that the I will say that the youth will know their information next weekend. So hopefully I can update people um, after next weekend if you have any youth in your Grange. And if you do have any youth in your Grange, I would love to hear from you as to who they are and how I can contact them. Okay. Anything else anybody wants to mention? Uh, I, I do. Can, yes, can, Jean. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, on the 2nd of March, uh, NEMCON, which is New England Magic Convention, we're having a show at night. Of course, I'm going for the whole thing during the day because there's lecturers and, you know, we learn, I learn new magic and, and different things. Anyway, um, at night, I think it's at seven o'clock uh, for 25 bucks for adults. I'm not sure what it is for kids, but if you go on the NEMCON website, NEMCON 42, uh, you can get all the info and uh, see the uh, who's who's going to be performing. Uh, and they are people that are really, really good. I mean, they perform in Vegas. They, the, some, uh, uh, a few of them have been on Penn and Teller on America's Got Talent. Uh, they're, they're at the top of their game. And, uh, and it's usually very funny. You can bring the kids. Uh, it's always a family show. So uh, if you like, uh, you know, look it up. <laughs> Excellent. I'll get that out, Gene, to my folks in case they're interested. So thank you for pointing that out. And is it N E M NEM? NEM con, yeah. Yep. Okay. I'll 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 look it up. 42. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I sure. want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. I think we had a great turnout. Joan, thank you for participating from beautiful Myrtle Beach. And be Gene. Thank you for participating to all our lecturers. Kristen, I hope everything's well with your family. It was great seeing you in Rhode Island and playing sequence and letting me win <laughs> at least two games. Um, Rhode Island hosts uh, um, a game night once a year and pizza party free of charge. Over 50 people went to it and they've done it for a number of years. Val Richards did it. I thought this is going to not be my thing. We told the kids we're going. The kids loved it. Um, and, you know, we got them off electronics for like three hours and they played games <laughs> around the room and you can move around and play board games or just chat or eat refreshments. I discovered Traffic Jam, J-A-M. It's a jam from Pennsylvania Dutch and I've got the recipe now, so I've got to make it. I discovered... Um, 
cookie salad, which what better salad could there be than cookies? And um, I got the recipe from Desiree Richard, um, the daughter of the Rhode Island lecturer. So again, we're trying to find things that bring fun to our members. So if you've got ideas, and again, people like to Rhode Island's every year, Kristen, who is a, a local um, president there, but um, from Massachusetts now too, she she was there with her spouse and my whole family went and, you know, they welcome people and we'd love to try it sometime in Connecticut if there's interest. So let me, let me know. And, um, and if there's nothing else, I'll end our ninth um, Connecticut State Grange Lectures Roundup. I'll be getting information out soon about when our 10th will be. If you have ideas for speakers, let us know. And our 10th will be before our June conference because we want to make sure everybody has plenty of time to register for the, um, the June conference for, and it's open to anybody. You don't have to be a lecturer. We're going to have great educational stuff. Um, one of the people for the lecturers conference is going to be on artificial intelligence, which I think is a cool topic and how to use stuff to help write articles. Um, and um, in some just some really cool presentations we're going to be in seminars we're going to be having there, as well as good eating, good networking, good um, um, we don't call them raffle, I guess drawing prizes, and um, it'll be a, a fun time for us. So thank you, everybody, very much, and good night.